Bitcoin. Hello, Coin Community. This is Robert with CoinOp. Today I wanted to read you the Lincoln Memorial Series that started in 1959 and went up to 2008. We're only going to look at the Memorial Series reverses, none of the other ones. Those will be another video. What I'd like to concentrate on is hub design changes and also transitional errors. Some of them are pretty easy and common to get while others are quite difficult with a couple being unique. So, without further ado, let's have a look at a few. The first few coins we're going to look at are going to be hub design changes. And the first coin will be the 1960 Lincoln Cent. The Yawburst Master Die was being hubbed from a master hub with only one digit. The other three digits was then punched into the master die and was then used to hub the working hubs. Early on, the master die had cracked and a new one had to be made. The new master hub was made with a different liberty on the new master die when it was being hubbed. Also, when the 960 was punched into the new die, it was larger than the original ones used. Today, collectors affectionately call them the large date, and dies struck from the original master die are known as the small date and are much scarcer. For some time, both working hubs were being used simultaneously to make the working dies. Working dies need to be hubbed more often to bring the relief up. And somewhere along the line, apparently the hubbing had got mixed up. And this is why we have some of the large over small dates and some of the small over large date varieties. In 1970, we have a similar occurrence that happened when there was two different master dies were produced from two different master hubs. At least one of the proof dies was hub using both the small and the large date working hub, giving us the large over small date variety for that year. I'm also including the 1970s large date double die offers, which is known as FIVA Stanton 101, only because it has a good value and is worth anywhere from five to $37,500 for higher examples. Next, we're gonna look at the 1974. The obverse hub used in 73 was the same one used to make the new dies. About the middle of the year, a new master hub was made, and it continued throughout the rest of the year. This year also showed that in 1974, the Denver Mint had experimented with an aluminum piece. There is only one example of this coin that can be legally owned. At the only sale I am aware of, it sold for $250,000. Not bad. Next, in 1982, with the rising cost of copper, the men had started to look for alternative compositions for the scent. A combination of zinc and copper plating was chosen. The cores were made of 99.2% zinc and 8% copper, making the total percentage 97.6% zinc and 2.4% copper. At the same time, the relief was also reduced slightly to increase the dye life. Also, in 1982, the obverse master hub was changed, making the bust and date noticeably smaller. Both designs were struck on both compositions in 1982 at the Philadelphia Mint. Apparently, in Denver, the 1982 D large date was struck with both the copper and with the copper coated zinc. As of this recording, the 1982 Denver small date was only thought to be struck in the zinc. However, one example was struck with a 95% copper, 7% zinc composition and sold for $18,800 in the August 2017 Stax Powers auction galleries. Each time I pick up a 1982 small date Lincoln Sun, I have to take and get my scale out. A normal one would weigh 2.5 grams, but if you happen to find one that weighs 3.1 grams, you will definitely need to get it authenticated. In 1988, the Mint was working on modifying the design of the reverse of the Lincoln Memorial set for the following year in 1989. 
but sometime during that year, the newly modified dies had made its way into the business production and was used on both the Philadelphia and the Denver Mint. The easiest way to tell would be the crossbars and the designer's initials. These command a little bit of a premium, but are well worth looking for in your change. Finally, in this video, we're going to review the 1992 Plain and Denver Mint Lincoln Cent. You have both the normal and the close AM. This is also a transitional as they were going to change the reverses in 1993. While searching, if you happen to locate a 1992 close AM, they run in value in uncirculated from 8,000 to 26,000. For the 92D close AM, they run between $3,750 and $12,000 for higher grades. I have yet to locate an example of this variety, but I turn over every 1992 to look on the reverse to see if I have the close AM. Hello and welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the video. Now, a few reminders. This weekend we're having the coin seminar where a bunch of the coin channels are going to take and we're just going to be giving live seminars that you can ask questions. So I hope you join us. Uh, there will be a link below where you can take and see a schedule for the shows. Uh, another thing is Friday night at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time we're going to have a live coin auction here on CoinOp. Uh, the show or the auction will end once we take it, once we've sold everything. Uh, have PayPal available and you can join in the fun. Hope to see you there and as always, happy hunting. Oh, by the way, I think Dustin's got a few things he might want to say to you. Take care all. Real quick everyone, I wanted to talk briefly about our sister channel, Variety and Errors, hosted by Kyle Frank. What's happening folks on the interwebs? It is Kyle with Variety and Errors. Welcome to my channel. Now, if you are into collecting United States currency, well, Variety and Errors on YouTube might be the right channel for you. Kyle goes above and beyond to explain about United States currency, what is worth more than face value in your pockets, and he likes to show older bills, he likes to get into fancy serial numbers, just various aspects of the currency field. So if that is what you are into or you just want to see somebody searching lots of bills, well, go check out Variety and Errors hosted by Kyle Frank, which is the sister channel to CoinOp on YouTube. And while I have you here, if you enjoyed this video, do us a huge favor and hit that thumbs up button. Also, leave us a comment. The more that you interact with our channel, the more it encourages YouTube to share our content with more and more people. Also, by subscribing. If you are not yet subscribed to our channel, click on that subscribe button. And while you are at it, click on the notification bell. That way you get notified immediately when we upload new content. Well, everyone, until next time, have fun.